Hello everybody, this will be the first video for Pure Math Unit 1 uh, as an introduction to logic. What is logic about? Well, logic is used in math to describe or relate any systems that can either be true or false or on or off and is very much related to binary numbers. And to do this in logic, we use something called propositions. Now, what is the definition of a proposition? Proposition, firstly, must be a statement. So no questions are allowed to be a proposition. A proposition can either be true or false, but not both. A proposition is also allowed to be true or false depending on circumstance. So the truth of it can change. And every proposition is given something called a truth value which can either be one or zero and essentially it describes whether or not the thing is true or false if it is true it is given a truth value of one if it is false it is given a truth value of zero instead of one and zero the letters t and f can also be used in some places and the last thing to note is that for any given proposition its opposite will be noted by this symbol here and it will be called not that proposition. So now let's take a look at a couple of phrases so, and see whether or not they are propositions. So the first one, it is cold today. If this was read on a cold day, its truth value would be one, and if it was not cold, its truth value would be zero. However, it is still a proposition because it is a statement and it can be either true or false. This, hey, are you okay, is not a proposition because this is a question and it can also not be true or false uh, depending on circumstance. This, hey, too, is even, is a proposition and it has a truth value of one. This, hey, is also a proposition. It is just a false proposition because three is not even. So its truth value is zero. And down here we have something called a truth table. This would be read as truth table for not Q. And a truth table in logic is just something that allows us to easily determine whether or not a proposition is true. So what happens if propositions are linked? How can propositions be linked? So in this here, we have two propositions making up a compound proposition. So you are watching this video is the first proposition and you are eating food is the second proposition. This here, or also called the disjunctive in logic, is used to link these two propositions. And this or has its own truth table associated with these two. Now, if we were to write that in mathematical form, we can say let P be the proposition you are watching this video, let Q be the proposition you are eating food, and this symbol is representative of all in logic. The truth table for P or Q would be as follows. To draw a truth table properly, you must use the convention starting with 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and then 1, 1 in that order. That's just convention in math. And this is done to show all possible combinations of P and Q. So P can be 0, Q, Q can be 0, P can be 0, Q can be 1, etc. Now, this truth table makes sense when you think about it because if I were to tell you, you are watching this video or you are eating food, in which circumstances would I be correct? I would be correct if, well, you could be watching this video and you could not be eating food, but because I said or, I would still be correct. And you could also not be watching this video. You could be, say, looking at your phone and you could be eating food, but because I said or, I would still be correct. You could also be doing both and I would be correct. The only time where I would be wrong in making this statement would be if you were not watching this video and you were not eating food. 
and that can be seen when p is q, when p is 0 and q is 0, p and q is 0. Sorry, that should have been p or q. In the truth table, p and q are also known as the inputs, and this will be known as the output. Okay, let's take another look at a way to connect propositions. Now, this sentence says, this is a pencil and I am writing on paper. If I were to say this, in which cases would I be correct, i.e. would this have a truth value of 1, and which cases would I be wrong? This has a truth value of 0. Because of this con con connective here, called and, uh, otherwise known as the conjunctive in logic, I would only be right in one circumstance, which is when indeed I was writing on paper with a pencil. But even if I was writing on paper, the fact that I don't have a pencil means that this statement would be wrong overall. And similarly, if I did have a pencil, but I was not writing on paper, the statement would still be false. And if I didn't have a pencil, and also I wasn't writing on paper, the statement would be wrong. And that can be seen in this truth table here. This symbol is representative of and, just like how the other one was representative of or. Now this is the truth table for P and Q, and you can see that the only time this statement is true, i.e. has a truth value of 1, is when both this is a pencil and I am writing on paper are correct. Okay, so now let's take a look at a different kind of compound proposition. This would be read as P and not Q. Remember this symbol means and. Now to draw the truth table for this to find out in which circumstances it would be true, you have to start off simple and work your way up. So you start off with the first component, P, and first component being Q. I know this says not Q, but it's a, it, it's a good idea to start with Q and then do not Q after. So in the same way, we write 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 as all possible input combinations of P and Q. Then you write not Q in relation to Q. So when q is 0, not q is 1. And when q is 1, not q is 0. And then lastly, you do p and not q. And that means that you'll be looking at this column, this column, comparing the two inputs, and then finding out your output. And remember that and is only correct when both inputs are 1, as seen before. And that will be in this row here. P is 1 and not Q is 1. Therefore, P and not Q is 1. In every other case, you either have 0 and a 1, 0 and a 0, or 1 and a 0. Now let's take a look at another compound proposition. This one is a little bit different. In this one, we say, I do not want eggs and bacon. And of course, this do not applies to both wanting eggs and wanting bacon. How would we write this in mathematical form? Well, if this represents I do not, not, and then this represents I want eggs, and I want bacon, then I can say I do not, and then you have all of this in brackets because this is I want eggs and bacon. So do not want eggs and bacon. That's how this would be represented as this. The I do not represent is represented by this and so on and so forth. Now, this can be changed in the English language. This can be rephrased, of course. If I tell you I do not want eggs and bacon, what would that mean? Well, that might mean I do not want eggs. It could also mean I don't want bacon, but it could also be that I don't want either eggs or bacon. And it can be rephrased as this. 
I do not want eggs or I do not want bacon. And you'll notice that the connective is changed from and to or when you sort of get rid of the brackets. And that is a law in logic, one of the laws called de Morgan's law. And that states that when you have a compound proposition, not P and Q, that is equivalent to not P and not Q. Sorry, not P or not Q. And that makes sense intuitively if you think about it in terms of the English language. There's also a mathematical proof for it, which I can put out here. You can pause the video if you're interested. This is just comparing the truth tables for these two here, this one and this one. So to find the truth table for this, you start off with P and Q as usual, then do P and Q, and then do not P and Q. And similarly down here, this takes a few more steps, but you have to do P, Q, not P, not Q, and then not P or not Q. And you'll see that because these columns look the same, we call them logically equivalent. Okay, let's take a look at one more compound proposition. So imagine that your friend told you, or in this case, it would be your ex friend, I will not be your friend anymore or come to the movies. And as usual, this statement, I will not, applies both to being your friend and coming to the movies. How would we rephrase this in the English language? Well, of course, this is how, this is what this would mean. Expand it. When you say, I will not be your friend anymore or come to the movies, you're saying, I will not be your friend and I will not come to the movies. Similarly, with the statement before, this can be represented by this notation here, where I will not is represented by this, being your friend anymore is represented by proposition P, and coming to the movies is represented by Q, and you'll see that the symbol for all remains the same. And if you take a look at this, this can be represented by this here. I will not be your friend and I will not come to the movies, right here. This is De Morgan's second law. Um, don't worry, there are only two laws. And it states that for any proposition that's not P or Q, that is logically equivalent to not P and not Q. And again, there is also a proof. You can pause the video if you want to copy it down or work it out for yourself and you do it in the similar way as before. And you would see that once the columns are the same, you end up with something that shows that it's logically equivalent. Okay, lastly, there are just some laws in logic that students are required to learn because when you have to break down the really, really long compound propositions, you have to use these laws. So they're different names, these are called the idempotent laws. Um, you can pause the video to take down these laws if you wish. These are the identity laws, the complement laws, absorption laws. Um, and logic is actually associative and distributive. And of course, commutative too. All right, that was it for the introduction to logic. Thank you very much for watching. There will be more of these videos in future.